Hi, this is Robert Rickover. I'm an Alexander Technique teacher in Lincoln, Nebraska. I also teach regularly in Toronto, Canada. My guest today is Bob Leda, who's an Alexander Technique teacher in the Boston area. He's been a teacher for about 30 years. And we're going to talk today about our slightly different views on distance uh, teaching, distance mm -hmm. learning for, Ale for the Alexander Technique. Uh, Bob, welcome to the show. Oh, glad to be here, Robert. Always happy to talk with it's you. It's fun talking with you. Yeah. Um, so here's a, a, before we start, maybe if you wouldn't mind giving a, a short description or definition of the Alexander Technique. Sure. For me, our territory is how you do what you do and who you are when you do it. And the Alexander Technique is to explore this with all of our students. Mm -hmm. So both Bob and I do uh, distance teaching using yeah. Zoom, I assume in your case yeah, as well. Yeah. And uh, pretty much every, right now we're recording this in uh, August of 2020. I'd say the vast majority of Alexander Technique teaching going on, certainly in the U.S., is is uh, on Zoom oh, or yes. similar yeah. platforms. And um, I, I think that Bob and I have uh, have slightly different views about the our preferences in terms of using Zoom for teaching mm -hmm. or in person. And Bob, I think, is a little more people-oriented than me, perhaps, or <laughs> who knows. But he uh, he he would he would be happier if he were teaching uh, in person. Is that correct? I, I prefer it. There's a lot. Yeah. Um, there's a lot to be said for teaching in person. There's a lot to be said for teaching remotely mm -hmm. uh, as well. And we get a far broader reach. Mm -hmm. you know with uh, with doing this mm -hmm. uh you and i are using zoom right now and i think uh we both feel that's the best platform uh for it uh i've used webex uh the sound ugh, you know was terrible yeah. uh google hangouts didn't work real well mm -hmm. as far as recording and all of that i haven't tried to do anything with microsoft teams so we'll see how the technology develops over the next year i think Mm -hmm. And uh, we might be having a very different conversation a year from now. Mm -hmm. But as of right now, uh, if, if it were possible for you to have uh, a student in person as opposed to online, you would yeah. prefer that. I would prefer that, yeah. And maybe it would be good for you to, to, to give that what, what you see as the advantage of that. Sure. Uh, I mean, one of them's pretty obvious, I think. Well, I, well, I'll leave it to you to describe. Yeah, it's the... it's more the where are you trying to go with a lesson? You know, what's mm -hmm. uh, you know what's what are we really trying to do? Mm -hmm. uh, I f believe that what we're trying to unlock uh, for our students is um, parts of them, capabilities of them, all of that that they don't realize that they have already. Right. Uh, and I see the uh, use of our hands as um, really the thing that takes them over the line to get there. Mm -hmm. As a form, when, I, when I'm doing a uh, lesson in person, you know, I'll let the person get as far as they can on their own and then step in with a little hand stuff to say, oh, and this is also possible, mm -hmm. you know, to here's the things that haven't occurred to you yet so that you can uh, possibly evolve into them. I'm having a hard time getting to that when teaching online. You know, I've got sort of ways, sort of not, but uh, it's, it's much, much easier when you're in person. Mm -hmm. And the connection... Um, between myself and the student because it's three-dimensional and right there uh, is different from the uh, the online experience where you really have to do, extrapolate a lot. Uh, so your use of vision is a lot different too. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't completely adjusted to that yet. Right. 
So for sure, uh, a, a teacher with a reason, even reasonably good hands uh, ability can elicit a, a pretty dramatic improvement instantly in someone's uh, use and functioning. Yeah. And I, I, I think the, the argument there is, well, it may be a bit temporary because it's coming from outside, but it, it, first of all, it gives the student a, 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 a realization that this is possible. Mm -hmm. and, um, and perhaps to some extent, it actually gets incorporated in their uh, use patterns. I mean, some people have had lessons from teachers who only used hands-on and barely spoke and um, have improved from that. So yeah, I was never a big fan of those, but yes, I well, know. Uh, I, I, yes, my first Alexander right. experience was exactly that. Huh. Yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, for me at that time in my life, that might have been the best approach. Mm. Uh, f for the me back then, I think... Um, I think just getting zapped over and over again and having the <laughs> results show up outside of lessons, which is where they showed up for me, yeah. got me so intrigued that I eventually became an Alexander teacher. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you on that. I mean, we're trying to pique the student's curiosity somehow. You know, right, and, right. And have them be willing to go through this exploration. Yeah. Right. Now, one thing I like uh, when I've seen you teach, Robert, is that I, I really like the way you use language. Mm -hmm. And I think language, when you're in the um, online environment, becomes more important. You know, mm -hmm. it, it, kind of, it starts to replace a little bit um, the things that you can get with mm -hmm. your hands. Mm -hmm. You know, have you found that you had to um, change your language working online? Did, did um, I did. Online? And yeah. and uh, when I first started teaching online, I was still mostly doing uh, individual lessons in person. Mm -hmm. And what I found is that my online teaching affected my in-person teaching dramatically. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, you know, forced to um, not rely on hands. With, and, <laughs> right. and at first, I, that seemed like, um, you know, like a missing option. But, um, and, and I think for some students, I think there are some students who I teach online, I wish I could just show up briefly in their house and give them a little direct hands-on yeah. experience. Uh, so there is that, I think for some students and some teachers, that that's a downside. But what I have found is that there is a gigantic upside that I had not really expected, which is that, you know, in a typical private individual lesson, you help them. You help them do things. You maybe give them some ideas to think about. Maybe you, you you introduce them to Alexander directions or whatever, and you set you you send them off and maybe see them next week. And for me, one of the first questions I would ask is, "Well, how did you do with with the the project?" Yep. Yep. And yep, yep. seven or eight times out of ten, well. I was, I was just too busy. I, I just yeah. didn't think about it, right? I know yeah. I, I think all teachers have had that. With online teaching, that doesn't happen near as much. And I think hmm. the reason is, at least for me, it doesn't, is that it's absolutely clear to the student that they are a student, not a recipient of some external zapping so to speak right. and uh, that and i think it's it, it makes it clear for the teacher as well um that this is a, a a very different this is not so much not a therapy you know this is the teaching mm -hmm. process and given that they they're much more likely to think, well, okay, so I have some things I can work on that I've been given. I've also been given the video so I can see how things worked out in the lesson, and that can be very eye-opening 
for students sometimes. Yeah, let me interrupt you there because I think that's one of the big pluses. Um, that's a huge plus. With teaching with Zoom, particularly if, um, if you're working with activities, the student can see themselves by using the spotlight feature so they really mm -hmm. uh, fill the whole screen. Mm -hmm. And so to bring together for the student a visual impulses right. and kinesthetic impulses at the same time, you get something where the sum is really greater than the parts. And I, I think that part is just fantastic. Yeah. That, the, uh, I don't know if you've run into this. Uh, there seems to be a lot less um, charge looking at yourself in a screen than looking at yourself in a mirror. You know, the people yeah. who look themselves in the mirror, it's, oh, man, is my hair all right? You know, that, yeah. you know, all of that, that kind of thing. And I don't see that as much uh, when teaching online. I don't know if you've found the same thing or not. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can't really comment on that. I, I, mm. I will often roll out a mirror for someone to look at if they don't believe it when I tell them they're <laughs> <laughs> not, not leaning back or whatever. Right. Um, right. But I have to say, some is a lot of times a sideways view of somebody that they can watch head on is is an amazing experience, mm -hmm. and that's tough mm -hmm. to do with mirrors. I mean, they have to turn their head to see. Uh, you could use a camcorder, obviously, but um, to me, having that video uh, available for the students to, to watch, and and perhaps you know, I've explained uh, a. A direction I'd like them to explore and explain what the you know what the traps are of the direction you know and it's mm -hmm. stuff like that look they get a chance to listen to it again some students say they they watch them two or three times some students are not that interested in the in the videos I found yeah but, right, right but right. for the ones who do it's a and it's easy enough to do you just send them the video after the yeah, after yeah. the lesson. But to me, the really big thing is students taking more responsibility for themselves right from the beginning. It's, it's clear at the very beginning of the process that this is not, this is not me fixing them. Mm -hmm. um, That's such a big hurdle to climb too. You it know, it the, is, yeah. yeah. I, I do think, um, for me, I think I don't think I would be doing teaching online the way I do if I hadn't had certain experiences early on, uh, especially working with Marge Barstow, mm. because uh, she's a, an Alexander teacher who passed away in 1995. Um, uh, she, uh, sh she obviously taught in person, but she taught groups and often large groups of people. And she used her hands very sparingly. Um, she would use them when she felt it was important, but she did not just jump in there typically with, with hands-on work. Yeah, she's and, one of my yeah, heroes. She's, she's my teacher I've been most influenced by. Mm. So that, and, and also there was a huge emphasis on other people in the groups observing. So we got really good at, at seeing things, watching mm. people and, and, and seeing what they were doing. So that's helped me a lot. Yeah, I'm glad you brought up uh, seeing things because observation, I think, really becomes uh, even more critical, mm -hmm. uh, critical meaning important, mm -hmm. uh, uh, even more critical when you're teaching online to right. um, see not only what is seemingly happening, but what might happen, mm -hmm. what can potentially happen, and to see a path to get there um, is a tremendous skill to refine, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think mm -hmm. for every teacher yeah. and um, not to, to not settle for your first impression, uh, mm -hmm. but build on it as time goes on is mm -hmm. a, mm -hmm. another one uh, that I found to be very valuable. Yeah. And of course, there's the other, there's what we might call the economic factor or the, um, yeah, we could call it the economic factor that when you're teaching online, your potential student body, uh, number of people potentially who you could teach increases multiple times. Right. Right. Even if you're living in a big city like Boston, 
the world's a lot bigger than Boston. <laughs> well, you know, you know what's funny about that? There was a day um, during July where in the morning uh, I taught a class in England because it was mm-hmm. the middle of their day. Right. Uh, in the middle of the day, I did some work with people here in Boston. And then in the evening, I taught a class in Korea because it was their next morning. Yeah. You know, and that would yeah. all have been uh, possible if we didn't have this. Fortunately, yeah. the it, yeah. infrastructure is getting there to where you can do that kind of thing. Right. I'm glad you mentioned Korea because that's an interesting country uh, from an Alexander Technique point of view and teaching. Uh, most most Koreans speak English, which is a big help if you're American like we are. And uh, Korea, unlike America, has uh, an incredible internet system, uh, infrastructure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, even in the tiniest fishing village, the, the minimal acceptable speed is half a gig, which is, you know, for most of us, that, that, that'd be really amazing. It'd be really expensive is what it and, would be. Well, yeah. you know, the other thing is it's free for everybody. Yeah. And you have a culture in Korea and and in some other Southeast Asian uh, countries of you want to learn a skill. Well, where do you go? You go, you find a teacher online. If mm-hmm. your, you, your kid wants to learn Tai Chi or the violin or you want to learn, take a cooking class. That's a very common approach in a lot of countries. Yes. Yeah. And so when someone hears about the Alexander technique, well, no teacher here right now but hey let's see who's teaching online well my uh, pals were telling me that uh, within the last month I couldn't say when but some famous media star uh, talked about having Alexander lessons Mm -hmm. and after that all of a sudden you know their referrals went up 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 and Mm -hmm. they started to get very full practices as a result Mm -hmm. of that yeah it's a very uh, media intensive uh, country yes absolutely yeah and you know the, the other thing that I think um, about online teaching that I don't think I don't think most of us consider enough is that for someone to come for an in-person session even if they live in the same city and it's maybe a half hour trip to get to your place well that's in a half hour and then a half hour back and what most people these days may be a little less with the pandemic, but then uh, on the other hand, they're not traveling anyway. But it, it, most people in, the, in a normal course of events, the, their, the, their most precious commodity is their time. And yeah. you, you can, you know, if you can save someone an hour of travel time, that's a huge factor. I was really surprised last, uh, it must have been about a year ago, because mm-hmm. uh, I teach at Berkeley College of Music, yeah. and they had done surveys of the students around them, so they had born, been born after 2000, mm-hmm. and that group valued speed over accuracy. They mm-hmm. preferred to get something quickly than to get it um, you know, accurate and right. And I'm still trying to put my arms around all of that. So how do we start to live in, because you and I are a different generation from them, how do we start to live in this digital world uh, and still offer what we have to offer, which is, you know, very powerful and very useful, Mm -hmm. I think, for the students. So it's, uh, it's an ongoing adaptation, but it's real. You know, we can't pretend that it's not happening. Yeah, the because uh, I think the in-person stuff is going to get uh, less and less and less as time goes on, just mm-hmm. because people live digitally. Mm-hmm. That's that's my sense. I think I think if the pandemic were to end in a, a month or two and everything snapped back to normal by the end of the year, the one thing that would not snap back uh, in the same way would be Alexander delivery system. I think a lot yeah. of people would still want to teach online. What what I've seen is that uh, from people I've talked to and people who are on Facebook and talk about this, teachers, Mm -hmm. that many of them kind of went into online teaching reluctantly. Mm -hmm. It was was the only choice. 
and yeah, they right. were they were dubious and they would start very cautiously maybe working with existing students or family members or friends which is a really smart thing to do it is. Uh, offer a few free sessions to people you know and say hey i just want to try this out you know become familiar with the technology with which thanks to zoom is pretty simple they, they they've got it down i gotta say and more times than i can recall recount they they'll say i was amazed at how how, how it helped i was amazed at the results of of, of what i did online mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um sometimes they'll say you know i think i over relied on my hands before oh many people have said that yes, yeah yes. that's that's common so mm -hmm. i think at the very least it's transforming the way people te teach in general including in mm -hmm. person but i do think online teaching is going to be i think that's the future of alexander teaching to a large extent and maybe online lessons will be kind of a premium thing you do if you really want to have that direct contact but who knows yeah the um the thing that I worry about, you know, they have uh, all those studies of infants who are deprived of touch and mm -hmm. they grow up very badly. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's something, I know we're not therapeutic, but there's something therapeutic about touch. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I've seen uh, a lot of online yeah, I can't say that. A lot of teachers who were scared to use touch. Uh, and uh, I, I think that's a bad thing. You mean in, in, in their in-person teaching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I, mm -hmm. I just, um, there's so much more to be gained than lost um, by that uh, deep and direct contact that I think we have to find out ways um, to approximate that in the online world. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been working with, I haven't really gotten anywhere with it yet, aside for, for me, you know, I can do it, but I can't teach it. Um, you know, seeing with your heart, touching with your heart, virtually touching somebody through the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of woo-woo, uh, but I see results and over time, I hope to uh, refine it into something that I can, uh, you know, give to everybody else too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we need that. We need that. So, uh, is there anything else you want to say on no, the I mean, topic? It, it, I mean, the thing with all of it, look, it's the way the world is, and mm -hmm. it's the way the world's going to be. Uh, and if you're an Alexander teacher, figure it out. You know, because yeah, you and. Have, you have and to. And there are some Alexander teachers who are never going to want to teach online, and and they're they're that's their orientation prerogative. and yeah. prerogative for sure, yeah. and I I respect that. But I do suggest that they at least give it a shot, mm -hmm. you know, not uh, not not do it because they they have a a, a bias against it, but not do it because they tried it a bit and it really wasn't successful right, right. i think no, that would you. be would make sense yeah even though i mean we have uh, our views i think are largely compatible oh absolutely do I prefer yeah. in person yes i do uh yeah. but i'm trying for myself to try to bring the depth of that in-person experience to um online lessons and mm -hmm. uh, i hope we all collectively can move forward that way mm -hmm. Well, let's end on that note. That's, oh, that sounds pretty good. Okay. Um, my my uh, guest today has been Bob Leda, an Alexander teacher in Boston. I'll put a link to his website. And if you're, you, well, you could live anywhere and have a lesson with him. But if you, when in-person lessons become available, there he is, available, <laughs> willing and able. Ready, willing and able. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, thanks, uh, Robert. Thanks, Robert. This oh, and thank, thank you. Thank you for being on the show. Yeah, okay.